interview. I'm Ted Price. I'm the founder and CEO of Insomniac Games. Well, initially it was just me in a 10 by 10 room and a 3DO dev kit and a PC. And I, I was really lucky to run into Al Hastings, uh, who's our uh, chief architect, and Brian Hastings, who's our chief creative officer. And my goal, as I, I told them, was to be a console developer. And the reason that I personally wanted to get into the console space was because I didn't understand the PC space. But I'd been playing console games all my life. And I'd always looked to those games as fantastic representatives of the art of video gaming. And I, I personally wanted to be there. And that's the vision we ended up sharing. And we never deviated, just in terms of the types of games we're making. Uh, in terms of our culture and, and who we are, that was, that's been consistent from the start too. At Insomniac, we've been about raising the bar with everything we do, making sure that everybody contributes to each of our games, and uh, delivering on time, every time. And that's been, that, those have been pretty consistent for us. Because we've branched out into multiple genres, defining what an Insomniac game is in terms of its specific content is a little bit difficult. But what we tend to do consistently with our games is put a lot of polish into them, put a lot of tuning into it, uh, make sure that the experience is broad for gamers, that we, we do have single player, we do have multiplayer co-op. And uh, we also incorporate a lot of user feedback into our games. And I think the result are high quality games across the board. At least that's always been our goal. And we've, you know, we're constantly striving for high quality for the consumers. I know that's something you hear probably from all developers, and I think that's the right, I think that we all should be striving for that. Here we are entertainment creators, and we want people to be entertained and engrossed, and we want them to get their money's worth, because ultimately, plunking down $60 for a console game, that's a lot of money. And you want people to stick with it, and you don't want them to just you know, feel frustrated. So our brand, uh, for us, is, is really, really important when it comes to quality. And I don't think big is necessarily what any developer goes for because we have to try to make the best possible game we can and do something or maybe a couple things better than anybody else in the industry and if you try to take on too much as we've learned the hard way uh, it it's impossible to do anything particularly well so scope control is is crucial now i think just through the natural progression of production games do get big all of a sudden you find yourself with a 60 player multiplayer, 8 player online co-op, and a giant single player campaign, and wow, that's massive. But I think as uh, our, our challenge as developers is to control scope. Now that could also go for smaller games, whether if you're making a Facebook game. I mean, it's certainly just as easy to add a couple weeks to that six, six week schedule, and then all of a sudden, the budget you thought you had is you know, at least 25% bigger. So I, I think we're fighting the same challenges, it's just now in a now we have, we're fighting them in different areas. Not we, Insomniac, but just the industry. Every year we ask ourselves the same thing. Where is the industry going? And every year we get a slightly different set of data to make that analysis. And this year, uh, it seems as if social games and casual games have really taken the mass market's uh, attention by storm. And as a company, Insomniac, we've been paying a lot of attention to it and making sure that our community efforts are uh, centered around social tools that are being used by everybody out there. We communicate with our gamers through Facebook, through Twitter, through all of the standard tools that people are now using to communicate with each other. And it's teaching us a lot about what gamers and non-gamers alike want from their games. And I think that it's good for us. I, mean, I, I don't think we as a company want to be stuck in a particular uh, genre or a particular type of uh, game development forever, we, we want to evolve and it's been really fun to, at DICE hearing different perspectives on where the industry is going. Well I think if you look at the film industry, films have uh, splintered quite a bit over the last 20 years, right? You have all sorts of budgets, you have different genres that, and subgenres, you have different audiences, but what's remained fairly consistent is the summer blockbuster. We still have those massive movies that people plunk down ten plus dollars to go to uh, because they're big spectacles. And I think that that opportunity will always exist in games because there's always going to be bigger and better, more immersive games. However, uh, there may be fewer and fewer opportunities because you know, people have a limited amount of money and especially time 
to spend on games. I think that was a big message here. Well, so you asked, I mean, you asked how close are games to being accepted as mainstream. Uh, you're going to get a different answer depending on who you talk to, right? My, my parents may never see games as mainstream because their friends don't play games. However, and my, my wife may be on the fence because some of her games, some of her friends play and some don't. My kids, yeah, as you pointed out, my kids were born playing games, right? That's, all, that's what they do. And all their friends, same thing. It's just part of their life. And so games are mainstream. Some people don't recognize it. Some people never knew any different. And so I, I, it's, hard, it's a hard question to answer. If mainstream means that they're treated with the same reverence as film or books, etc., I think the Academy Awards here have done a lot to elevate games as an art form. I think ITP, Into the Pixel, has also done the same. I think efforts made by many other organizations around the world to show off games as, uh, as media items with uh, relevance have, have done quite a bit to, to bring us up at, as we should as, I guess, artists.